Okay, good afternoon or evening, everyone. Um, welcome to this, the third in this year's uh, webinars for the Antimicrobial Resistant Animal Health Awareness Week uh, 2021, run by the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Uh, my name is Martin Blake. Uh, I'm the Chief Veterinary Officer in the department, and I'm your host for the evening. I really, really appreciate you taking your time to listen in to us, and I also want to appreciate the actual speakers we have with us here today. Um, the theme of this evening's webinar is herd health and taking a proactive approach to animal health to minimise disease and therefore also to minimise antimicrobial usage. This in turn leads to reduced antimicrobial resistance, which is one of the greatest global threats uh, currently uh, facing us. Uh, the concept of a proactive approach to optimising animal health is a key element of the National Farmed Animal Health Strategy and indeed in relation to the the INAP, which is our National Antimicrobial uh, Resistance uh, Action Plan. So Minister Martin Hayden, our Minister of State for Agriculture with responsibility for research and development, farm safety and new market development, has recorded a welcome and introduction message for us this evening and we'll hear from him now. So Joe, could I ask you to go to Minister Hayden, please? Hi, I'm delighted to be here this evening to launch this webinar focusing on the importance of herd health planning in optimising health and minimising antimicrobial usage, which are central components of Animal Health and Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness Week 2021. Tonight's webinar cuts across a number of government strategies, including the National Farmed Animal Health Strategy, the National Animal Health Surveillance Strategy, the National Farmed Animal Biosecurity Strategy, INAP2 and Food Vision 2030. Animal health is a central core element of profitable livestock farming. The webinar will focus on cattle and sheep health, not just in a way that considers improving the health of animals on the farm, but also the bigger picture, where actions to improve animal health will also reduce the development and spread of resistance, as well as improving production efficiency, a key element in climate sustainable livestock production. The agriculture and food sector continue to play a vital role in Ireland's economy in 2020, contributing 7.1% of total employment which provided for 163,600 jobs in rural and coastal areas. Agri-food exports also accounted for 8.8% of total exports and generated a value of over 14 billion euro for our economy. Antimicrobials and antiparasitic veterinary medicines are precious resources whose efficacy needs to be safeguarded for the future. While we must in the first instance focus on improving the health of our animals to reduce the need to use these products prudent use in a targeted way will protect their use as effective disease treatments into the future. A particular challenge facing humanity in the years ahead is that of antimicrobial resistance, AMR. This is a one health problem reflecting how public health, animal health and environmental health are inextricably linked. AMR threatens to undo a century of progress in human medicine, transporting us backwards to a stage when infections now considered trivial thanks to antibiotics become deadly killers once more. AMR equally threatens to render many drugs currently used by farmers ineffective. Two of the greatest global societal challenges facing Irish agriculture into the future are AMR and climate change. Animals with suboptimal health are inefficient from a greenhouse gas perspective as well. When we say we like to take a science-based approach to climate action rather than implementing crude measures, improving animal health is one of those common sense measures we are targeting. It not only delivers from a climate perspective, but from a farm income perspective. Good animal health contributes to the long-term sustainability of the sector by optimizing production efficiency, producing food, and protecting the environment. An increased emphasis on herd health seeks to change the focus from treatment of disease to the promotion of animal health as a driver of optimized production, improved margins for producers, and providing the best quality food for consumers. Consumers, as well as regulators, are pressing for antibiotics and other antimicrobials to be used more sparingly in our farms. Ireland is already among one of the lowest users in the EU, but better disease prevention programs allow us to use even smaller quantities of antibiotics without compromising animal well-being and welfare. It is heartening to see the leadership and dedication shown by members of the INAP Animal Health Committee in supporting the animal health actions outlined under Ireland's second One Health National Action Plan on AMR, which I launched last week with my colleague Minister Donnelly. Under INAP1, the farming and veterinary stakeholders of the INAP Animal Health Committee, together with Chagas and under the chairmanship of the Animal Health and um, the Animal and Plant Health Association 
collaborated to develop practical guidance and good practices around prudent use of antibiotics. These codes will continue to be useful reference points for farmers as they work with their vet and other advisors to improve their herd health and to reduce their overall antibiotic use. One of the key enabling principles of the National Farm Animal Health Strategy is prevention is better than cure. An increased use in preventative measures such as improved husbandry practices and strategic use of vaccinations will reduce the need for treatments with antimicrobials, with knock-on benefits in terms of improved herd performance and a reduction in selection for AMR. Just as a bacteria has evolved um, to develop mechanisms to avoid being killed by antibiotics, parasites such as gastrointestinal roundworms have also developed resistance to the doses and trenches that have been widely used over the past 50 years to control them. The widespread development of resistant parasites in, animal and in sheep and cattle, both internal and external, is a growing threat to animal health, welfare, productivity, and the sustainability of the cattle and sheep farming sectors worldwide. With new detention to grazing practices, husbandry practices, and nutrition help reduce the need for wormers and doses. When necessary, a targeted evidence-based and selective approach to the use of uh, antibiotics can ensure that the efficacy of current products is maintained and pro prolonged. As Minister of State, I have special responsibility for developing new markets for our products. Ireland is a globally recognised trading nation with a reputation for high quality meat and dairy products, and Ireland's animal health status is a primary element in trade negotiations with third country markets. We have ambitious targets for growing the value of our exports, and in light of Brexit, the importance of expanding our markets has never been greater. The international outlook for food availability and prices over the long term is underpinned by the need for global food production to increase by 60 to 70 percent to meet expected population demands by 2050. Food Vision 2030, which was recently launched by this department, is underpinned by the following missions. A climate smart, environmentally sustainable agri-food sector. Viable and resilient primary producers with enhanced well-being. Food that is safe, nutritious and appealing, trusted and valued at home and abroad. And an innovative, competitive and resilient sector driven by technology and talent. It is my department's policy to promote a strategy where there is very much a focus on being proactive rather than reactive when it comes to optimizing animal health. The objective of tonight's webinar is to increase awareness around key issues for animal health and to highlight how both antimicrobial and antimaletics um, resistance underpin the One Health concept. However, this webinar also aims to highlight some of the important actions that farmers can take to reduce their overall use of antibiotics and to improve herd health. Healthy animals are more productive and contribute more by way of food outputs per unit. Thus, per unit of food output, they have less environmental impact than animals whose health is compromised in any way. They also provide an increased output per livestock unit to farmers. Furthermore, healthy animals do not need treatment with antibiotics. Reducing the quantity of antibiotics being used in the, both the human and animal health sector is key to addressing the challenge of AMR. When it comes to animal health, prevention is always better than cure. We all have a part to play in keeping Ireland's livestock healthy. Let's all play our part. With that in mind, I hope you find tonight's webinar both interesting and useful. Turning to today's programme, several guests have joined us, including Fanula McCoy, Programme Manager for CellCheck, the National Mastitis Control Programme, led by Animal Health Ireland, Ailish Moriarty, a Nuffield Scholar and Milk Quality Manager for Kerry Agri Business, Dr Fiona Lovett, a Royal College of Veterinary Surgeon Specialist in Sheep Health and Production, and clinical lead for the RCVS uh, Knowledge Initiative, Farm Vet Champions from the UK, and Dr. James O'Shaughnessy, a parasitologist from the Department Central Veterinary Laboratory in Backwestern. I would like to sincerely thank our guests for agreeing to share their perspectives and expertise with us. I'd now like to hand you over to the host for this evening, Chief Veterinary Officer Martin Blake.